Show. This is your host, David Yannis, and you are going to be watching a great show with Mr. Brian Wells. And Brian Wells is, is a good guy. You're going to enjoy him. He's working with Hallmark, he's working with Walmart, and he's working with his own production company. And what they're doing is they're, they're going to take the, uh, remember, I guess, back way in the 70s, the 80s, there used to be a night, there used to be family entertainment night, where they're going to make that same family entertainment night on cable through the Lifetime channel, I believe, through the Hallmark channel, I apologize, and then they're going to they're gonna be able to broadcast the, the shows, and I think the first show that came up this year is The, La the Lost Medallion, we have a clip of that, we're going to show you that as well, and I'm also going to talk to you on the, la the later part of the segments, I'm going to talk to you about being a doer for the Lord, we've covered a little bit about it, I want to finish that subject tonight, so God bless, we'll be right back with Mr. Brian Wells. Welcome back to the show. This is your host, David Yanis, and we're excited about our next guest. I was very, very much looking forward to this next one because uh, it's something that I think that's needed in the country, first of all, with all the, the media and stuff that's out there, and we want to welcome Brian Wells. How are you doing, sir? It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And no problem. Thanks for taking some time. I know you're, you're a busy guy. Tell us about yourself, and tell us about the great project that you just started. Sure, yeah. Well, we're really excited. Uh, I'm one of the executive producers uh, working on something called Walden Family Theater. Okay. So what that is is that the Hallmark Channel, along with Walmart, Procter & Gamble, and Walden Media have joined forces to create Walden Family Theater on the Hallmark Channel. And what that's going to mean is starting now, March 15th, uh, for the rest of the year of 2013, is going to be great family movies on the Hallmark Channel at uh, 8 o'clock on Friday nights. And we're launching it on Friday night, March 15th, with a movie called Return to Nims Island. Okay, now what, what gave you the idea to do this? Well, you know, as a parent myself, I know that, you know, TV used to have this kind of uh, unifying effect on yes. families where you could all gather together and there would be a shared experience you could enjoy together. And just because there's so many choices and a lot of other factors, it seems like TV more is something that draws families apart now. Very Everybody true. goes and kind of enjoys their own thing. But, uh, and it's not that all TV needs to be this way, but we thought, where is that piece of primetime television that draws the whole family together, has this kind of unifying gathering effect? and it's something that kids will really enjoy, mom and dad will enjoy, and maybe will even spur conversations after you watch it. That's amazing. And were you selective on, on the selective process to get what movies to show? Absolutely. Well, we're standing on the shoulders of giants here because this is Walden Media who okay. we're doing this with. Who, you know, these are the people who brought us the Chronicles of Narnia because of Win Dixie, Bridge to Terabithia, Charlotte's Web. Yes. I mean, a lot of great, great awesome pieces of entertainment that also happen to be great for the whole family to watch. So we knew Walden was the right partner in this. So yeah, they're very careful about, you've got to first find just awesome stories that are going to engage everybody, but then also something that is a story that's kind of worth telling. Okay. That will be maybe be something that not only will you be really entertained and have an awesome two-hour experience, but also it might be something that builds up something that you want to be building up in your family. Now today's era of reality shows, was it hard for you to sell this to people, to sell this to the Hallmark Channel, sell this to Walden. I mean, because if you look at it, if you go through Fox, go through uh, ABC, there's so many reality shows. There's no good family shows that I think of that, that just pops out of my mind. Well, we, uh, what helps is if you start with the right partners. Okay. So we've got Walmart and Procter & Gamble who care a lot about moms and know that okay. moms have this need for great entertainment in their family that's acceptable for the whole family. And then you've got the Hallmark Channel who they've really built a great brand saying we're going to put stories out there that kind of don't prey on what's worst in the yeah. human experience but maybe call out what's best in us. And then you've got Walden who we're all familiar with, you know, their legacy. So you start with the right partners and then you say, hey, let's create something that's going to serve families an awesome experience and not the kind of movie that I'm going to have to drag my kids to sit down and watch with us but yeah. maybe the kind of movie that my kids will drag us to watch and then the whole family will enjoy it. Yeah, yeah that's, it, starts with, it starts with the kids. you got to get them interested. you got to get them wanting to see it and, and when you do that you got to win-win because you know, when parents are seeing kids get good things deposited in them I'm, I'm sure they're going to want them to be seeing that instead of seeing something else or playing a video game that's not even adding to them. Sure. So that's a that's amazing. Sure. And, it, and it has to start with great entertainment. If it's not great entertainment to start with, it's not going to serve anybody. Now, how long did it take to put this project together? 
Well, we've been working on this for about a year or so, but obviously Nim's Island, I mean, this is a sequel to Walden's 2008 box office hit, uh, Nim's Island. So, okay. you know, that author, and it's based on the author's books of the Nim's Island, so that's been a long part of the process. But as far as Return to Nim's Island, we've been actively working on this for about a year now. Now you're going to be producing new shows too, or just, or just playing the shows as well? I'm playing, playing from the library of the Walden. Yeah, so we have, as part of this, for this next year, there are going to be six worldwide premieres wow. on the Hallmark Channel that are brand new Walden movies that they're creating. So there's going to be six world premieres that are happening and on And these Friday are being nights. created specifically for this channel? Specifically for Friday nights on the Hallmark Channel. They will air there first before anybody sees them anywhere else in the world. Uh, and then we're also going to be drawing on a library of films from the Hallmark Channel of great family films they've aired in the past. They'll be bringing those in as well. So the combination of the number of times that these six world premieres are going to air, plus the Hallmark Library, there's going to be 30 Friday nights throughout the rest of 2013 that families will be able to go Friday night, the Hallmark Channel, they'll know it's a great place for entertainment. That's amazing. Now, now, when does it start again? Friday night, March 15th. So Friday night, March 15th on the Hallmark Channel will be Return to Nims Island. And then the cool thing about it is it airs on Friday night, March 15th, and then the DVD of the movie is available the next Tuesday, March 19th, in any Walmart store. Now, how has the response been, in, like in your family or your co-workers and what was the response to them that, that you're going to start doing this? Well, you know, it's been incredible because almost everybody you share this with has this immediate aha that takes them back to what either Friday nights, you know, used to be yeah. on such and such network or maybe Sunday nights used to be. Yep. They said, you know, it, and everyone is drawn back to that. Yeah, I would like at least one night where we know we could go do that. So for almost everybody, they're like, they're really the question they ask is, why isn't somebody already doing this? That's true. You know, just to, not that I'm going to date myself how old I am, but I remember back when Walt Disney, ABC used to have like the repeats of Walt Disney, but it used to be a movie night on Sunday nights on ABC. Sure. And used to sit there and then the host would come in or it used to be an old Walt Disney uh, when he used to come out and talk. And uh, it was it was something that we looked forward to way back then. So yeah, you start thinking about that and it'll be nice because most families should have, and I do, uh, we have a family night and it's usually Friday nights that we sit down and we try and find a decent movie that we can get from Netflix or from right. a Red Box and we sit down with the kids and that, that's a need, and uh, you're, yep. you're going to be filling that, so that's awesome. Well, and that's the other thing I'm excited about this, is not only you're doing incredibly high-quality entertainment, but also it's affordable. What's more affordable than, you know, free television? You know? Yeah. So the idea of Friday night, you go grab some popcorn, some pizza or whatever, and sit down with your family and know that even maybe some Friday nights you won't even know exactly what the movie is of that night, but you just know Friday nights, you know, at 8 o'clock Eastern time, 7 o'clock Central, wherever you are, you could turn on the Hallmark Channel, and there's going to be two great hours for you. Amen. So all this is put into plans, ready to start ready to start starts friday night march 15th on the hallmark channel and then we'll continue the rest of the year and you look really excited about it <laughs> I am you know what this is one of those awesome projects sometimes you get in your life where you're excited about something creatively or professionally yeah. but then also i'm excited about as a consumer and a yeah, dad myself definitely, definitely i mean you're like really charged and that's good that's good you have to be in and that's that's amazing so what are some advice that you would give to family that may have a hard time getting their kids to watch or for them to watch what would you yeah well you know the best thing i would say is go to return to nimsisland.com and let your kids discover that have them discover this movie on their own because chances are they're going to come to you and telling you this is a movie they want to come see so this is not like trying to get your kids to eat vegetables here we've created <laughs> awesome ice cream that happens to be good for them is what we're doing so i would say send your kids to return to nimsisland.com let them check it out and then everybody you know then go grab the popcorn and pizza and sit down on friday night march 15th and let them see for themselves Sounds like quality product, quality distribution, you know, quality idea. It's got to work. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. It's amazing. Well, thank you so much. Hey, thanks for, being for having with me. Us. And I know we All fit right. you in. I appreciate you waiting for us. And uh, is there anything you want to tell everyone out there what they well, should be doing? I guess the only thing that I would say is, you know, as a parent myself, you know, often I'm like, you know, where are these options that will bring my whole family together? True. Well, we're doing it, and Walmart and, and Procter and & Gamble and, and uh, a Hallmark Channel along with Walden Media is creating that for you. So I would say the best thing you can do is vote with your remote on Friday night, March 15th. Show up and watch it, and you'll be, you'll be voting, and a lot of people, a lot of advertisers, a lot of networks are going to see that vote and knowing that there's a lot of people out there that are looking for more entertainment just like this. Thank you so much. I appreciate right. you coming. Thanks for having me. God bless. Welcome back to the show. I'm sure that you enjoyed that interview just as much as I enjoyed him. You know, he was a last minute interview at the NRB this last this last uh, February. And I tell you, he, he was amazing. I tell you why. And he kind of shared it and I kind of shared it too. I want to reiterate this. And it is important. 
in today's world and what we do and how we do it uh, as far as broadcasting and stuff to provide quality entertainment. Uh, there's so much junk online. You know, I have a good friend, that uh, a pastor friend of mine, and I tell him that I'm exclusively on our IPTV system, Rev Media Network, just for now. And I do put some stuff on YouTube, but I don't really put that much stuff on there. And I just want, I, I just tell him that that's, that's what I'm doing because I want to put a place where people can go find good content. And he said, well, you know, light shines brighter in darkness, and that's very true. So we got to make sure we put our stuff out there to where there's darkness, and that's what we're doing. When you look at the Hallmark Channel and what they're doing, partnering with Walmart and then pop, partnering with uh, the entertainment group that Brian represents, uh, it, it's, it's a good win-win for everyone. And people need to have good things deposited in them, not only godly things, but good moral things. You know, the Bible says that man's heart will wax cold in the last days. My friends, have you seen the news lately? Have you, have you looked around? We used to be safe. We used to always assume that we were safe. We were always assumed that things were okay in our neighborhood. But just recently, almost two weeks ago, they just found three ladies, teenagers, that were taken and out there in their 20s 10 years ago. And they just came out of somebody's house. So I'm telling you right now, my friends, you have to be willing to see good things deposited in people's heart. You've got to be willing to see uh, good entertainment, good broadcasting. And I remember, again, uh, back when I was growing up and how important it was to have the good things of God deposited in me. I was always in church, but I always watched my mom and dad made sure I watched good things. And, you know, I think I turned out all right. And not saying that the Holy Ghost can't go and, ch and chase someone's heart and make it change, but it can. It can help when you put deposits of faith in them, deposits of good morals. That's going to shape and change somebody's character. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. Uh, we're going to show you a promo video for The Last Medallion and, of course, the, the latest uh, PSA from Catherine Albrecht and then, of course, my healing service video. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. God bless you. Can you stay for a while? Are you here to tell us a story? A story? Okay, I've got a story. Yes. The story is called The Lost Medallion. King. Let her go. First the medallion. So now what do we do, Billy? We need your help. I'll help you. Behold, the way to defeat the Cobra. I am supposed to be Sir. I am King. You're a jerk. A true great King will find the courage to serve others. My mom told me every day of my life that I was an accident. Allie, you may have been an accident to your mother, but you were no accident to God. Why would you die for me? Because a great king once died for me. I told you just to wish it back! <laughs> Billy learned that his greatest value came from God. And the most important thing he could ever do 
was to trust his heart to the one who created it. My heart is my medallion. Could a virus make you fat? A new study suggests that being overweight might not be all your fault after all. I'm Dr. Katherine Albrecht, and I'll tell you more in just a moment. Your search engine is watching you, recording all your searches and creating a massive database of your personal information. That's creepy, but it doesn't have to be that way. Startpage.com is the world's most private search engine. Startpage doesn't store your IP address, make a record of your searches, or use tracking cookies, and they're third-party certified. If you don't like Big Brother spying on you, start over with Startpage. Great search results and total privacy. Startpage.com, the world's most private search engine. Think twice before blaming yourself or someone else for being overweight. A new study suggests a common childhood virus could be the culprit. Researchers found that children exposed to adenovirus 36, an infection that causes short-term gastrointestinal and respiratory symptoms, weighed an average of 52 pounds more than children who were never infected. Researchers believe this fat virus increases the body's fat cells and makes it harder for the body to break down mature fat cells later. The result is that people affected by the virus store more fat overall. So go easy on the next overweight person you see. Diet and exercise may not work as well for them as they do for you. the show and we're excited to have you here again um, Brian Wells amazing man doing a lot of things you see there's some things you can get creative in the Bible says in the Word of God that we have to have a a witty invention that God wants us to have, have witty inventions I had um, some friends on the air the other day from the Salvation or not from Salvation Army from a um, Tommy Barnett's son and a Matthew Barnett and we, we had him on the air with this gene manufacturer, and we were working on uh, doing an interview and stuff. And, and I mentioned this to him. Uh, th- what they do is they sell some jeans from a designer jeans. It's like $400 jeans. You buy them for $100, and they take out all the retail side of it and stuff. So when you buy the jeans, the, the Dream Center, which Matthew Barnett runs, it gets $10. And what that does is it, every time you buy a pair of jeans, you're supporting the Dream Center. What, what's the Dream Center? Well, it takes care of all the addicted, uh, prostitutes, takes care of trafficking, child trafficking, um, even uh, kids that are emancipated from their parents that, that are in a bad situation and trying to get their life straight. Well, that's what, that's what the support does. And while we're on the air, and this is towards the, toward the close of the interview, I said, you know what you got here, guys? You'll have a witty invention. And, uh, and everybody agreed that was, that, was, that was like, yeah, it's a witty invention. And then Matthew Barnett just stopped for a second. He goes, David, because I've never heard it applied like that. And I've heard that scripture way back when, far time from now, I don't know how long ago it was, but that is the perfect application of a witty invention, is we take something and we make it for God. And he goes, that was very wise of you, young man. And I tell you, it's not me, it's the Word of God, but right now, witty inventions. What is a witty invention? Well, putting together a broadcasting format um, to reach people and put in good morals and godly values and put that in front of people, that's a witty invention. You're going through the through the uh, what they call secular, you're going through that, and you're 
and you're getting inside there and you're bringing in in the word of God through them in a kind of subliminal sort of way, subliminal sort of way. And when you do that, people are getting changed. You see, the Bible says in, in different parts of the word of God, we have the different teachings of the word teaching about how some people, there's four types of ground. There's stony ground. There's, there's ground that with thorns. There's ground that has a little bit of soil. And, but each of those illustrations that Jesus taught on showed that those grounds, that's, that the word was taken out of them. The word which was life, the word which was stress, the word which was doubt, the word of God that was taken out of them. But you know what? You got to keep sowing. You got to keep sowing. You cannot go through this life without sowing seeds. Whether you sow seeds with your finances, you sow seeds with your prayer, you sow seeds with preaching the word of God and speaking the word of God of truth. Those are seeds you're putting out there. And you know what God does? God uses people like me. He uses people like you to come back around and bring some good water for them. Everybody, I believe, can come to the Lord. I don't care how far, how bad they are, they can come to the Lord. If Jesus can go on the cross and die with someone that is going to hell that very minute and their life changes and they come to the Lord, then everyone and anyone can be saved, even if it's last minute. I really believe that. God said, all you must do is confess that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart and you're saved. There's no work that you can do. There's nothing else. But anyway, I'm getting off the subject, but that is, that is what we're about. We're about a broadcasting, bringing great radio broadcasts, TV broadcasts, internet broadcasts out to, the, out to the millions. And do you know, and I shared these stats last week, and I'm going to share them again this week, 17 hours of listening, continuous listening on the radio station right now and TV, on the radio counseling channel and on the sermon channel, 172 hours of total listening in one day. I tell you, God is moving through the internet. So don't ever think, that just because you start something, it's not big or it's not going to reach people. Hey, you're reaching people and we're reaching people by your support. We're reaching people that normally would not turn on to a Christian broadcast station, but wanted to find something online to watch or listen to. And through those through online, God is ministering. I believe this. I don't know. I know I don't have the scripture there, but I believe this scripture it says for what, whatever your proceeds out of your mouth shall not return into your void. It shall accomplish that which you sent and prosper in the things you send it. I tell you, that is truth, my friends. The word you speak will prosper, will bless, will be a blessing. I want to turn to a scripture real quick. If we go to Matthew 9, well, Matthew 9, 35, 9, 35. We can pull that scripture up real quick. I think it's this one. If not, we may, we may have to change it. Uh, let's see. Matthew 9, 35. Okay. Yes, this is it. This is it. Let's go verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then say unto the disciples, The harvest is plenteous, but laborers are few. Pray ye for the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Let's leave that up and go to 962, Luke 962. And I want to tell you about the harvesting. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit. For the kingdom of God, no man having put his foot, hand to the plow and look at back is fit for the for the kingdom of God. Let's go to the next Luke that's there. I believe it's Luke nine Luke nine uh, five six. There's another Luke that should be there. Let's go. On. Yes, Luke fifty seven. There it is. That's the full scripture. Okay. And it shall come to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, and this is very important for you to get, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. And he said, but he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And then Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead, but go out and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell which are at home at my house. All right, let me tell you what this means. And I, I teach this a lot. When I go to different churches, this is something I kind of refer to a lot because everybody wants to do something for God. We all do. Everybody wants to be in ministry or doing something in ministry. Well, you don't go to church without being inspired to do something for the Lord. I was with a good friend, Frank Mazapika, a uh, couple of months ago. And um, I, I was looking at them and, and we're out there going, doing things and, and we're just talking. And he said, David, he goes, if you come to my church, because I was looking for another church to visit and stuff. He said, if you come to my church, 
you're going to be inspired. You're going to want to go out and do something because that's just the kind of pastor I am. I want to inspire you. I want to move you. I want to make things happen and change in your life. I want you to get active. I want you to do something. Well, you see, when we follow God and you're under the great, uh, great teaching or anointing that just, just inspires you, you're going to come out charged for the Lord and want to do something. And you're excited at that moment, just as those multitudes that followed Jesus. They were excited at that moment. They were excited at, at hey, this is the Son of God and He's teaching me. I'll follow you wherever. Can you imagine the emotion? Can you imagine you walk into the streets and, and you see Jesus teaching? He's teaching right there in front of you. He's telling people about you and telling people about the kingdom of God. And, and you're like pumped up. You're ready to go. How many of us get like that? Excited, ready to roll. But then they didn't do anything. They, they made excuses. They said, well, well Lord, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to go with you. That's not a question. I'm, I'm going to go with you. But let me go first tell my dad bye. <laughs> let me go tell my house goodbye. Let, let me go bury my father real quick. Not that the, any of those things weren't important. Trust me, they are important to the Lord, so they're important to you. They're important to Him. Whatever is important to you is important to God. We know that in the Scriptures. I've taught that before. But this is, when you say you're going to do something, God is saying, do it. Don't make excuses. If you say you're going to follow me, follow me. If you say you're going to be a preacher, stick with it. No man holding on to the plow and look it back. Now you're looking at this beautiful set behind me, but no man that looketh back is worthy of the kingdom of God. Not that saying that we can't look and say, wow, no, we can't look back. God wants our minds on what we're doing. You know, when I teach this, I usually give this example. I'm going to give this to you now. And imagine that plow, bring, bring that to the 21st century that we're in right now. It's no longer a plow, brother. It's a bulldozer. They don't use plows to do that on the, on the ground. They use big old machinery tractors just to tear up the ground. So imagine you're in a bulldozer and you're driving. Don't you think you got to have a little bit of concentration? Don't you think you have a little confidence that you can run the machinery? Because if you take your head off the ground, you're going to be zigging and zagging, but you're also going to run over someone's house. You're also going to plow it down. Now, I know there's a few people out there that probably need their house plowed down with the bulldozer. We'll leave them in the hands of the Lord. But God has good things for you, but you can't take your mind off what you're doing. Another thing, and this is what my spirit gets, if you commit yourself something at church, be committed to do it. The Bible says one of the greatest maturities in a person is when they, their yea is yea and their amen is amen. It is when you do what, your word, the, what the word of God, what you say your word is. The, the Proverbs, it talks about having your word and that your word, a man is valued because he follows his word. I tell you, God is able to do amazing things. Let's pick up that scripture from James 22, 25. James 22. It says, But ye do, be doers of the word. And not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man up unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. But whoso looketh unto the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, and being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the, of, of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen and amen. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Blessed in his deed. What does that mean? It means if you commit, God will commit for you. If you put your heart into something, oh, and I put my heart into the radio. I've put my heart into the broadcasting. I've put my heart into the publishing. And God has been committed to what I'm doing. And the work that I'm doing is blessed. It is blessed in his sight. Let me tell you five things real quick. Plug in. Ask God to help you. Think of the things you can do. And we shared this on the last broadcast. Don't stop doing when it gets tough and do more. My friends, thank you for watching tonight's show. We're excited that you're part of our broadcast and continue to watch us while we bring great interviews and some great teaching. I pray it's great. Anyway, God bless you. We'll see you next time on The Midwatch. The views and opinions of our guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of this station, this show, or its host.